Nevada State Railroad Museum. Today we're going to talk about how a steam locomotive works. Before we ask the question, how does it work, we have to ask why do we want it to work? What do we want to do with it? What we want to do is we want to simplify the tasks that men are performing by hand. And given the level of technology that was available 150 years ago, clever people designed the steam locomotive. And essentially what it did was it took a product that burnt wood, coal, not oil at that time, but, but things of that nature, and convert the heat from the burning into energy that we could use to do work to simplify the tasks of the everyday man. So a locomotive merely simplifies the work that needs to be done by consuming resources. In a steam locomotive, we burn something, it makes steam. The steam is under pressure, in other words, it's at a higher pressure than the atmosphere we it's live It's this pressure difference that does the work. So in a steam locomotive, we're going to burn some wood, it's going to heat some water. We're going to capture that water inside a sealed container, and as we continue to heat it, it's going to get hotter, and the pressure is going to go up. We take the steam that's under pressure inside the boiler and we, we direct it through pipes into machinery that will then do work. Typically these are pistons and the steam pushes on the front and then the local steam locomotive, the back of the piston. And the piston is connected by rods to the wheel and the wheel turns and the locomotive goes down the track. So, as we look at this piece of equipment behind me, which is an 1875 locomotive designed to burn wood and was used on the Comstock, this big round part that we see that's blue, sort of barrier behind the shiny brass and the pipe and the railings, is a hollow cylinder. And in that hollow cylinder are a whole series of tubes, like soda straws, horizontally oriented. Wood is fit in through a little door in the back of the boiler behind me. It burns in a space that's surrounded by metal and then by water and then by the outside of the boiler. And the smoke and the gas, the products of combustion, go through all those soda straw-like tubes and then out the stack. That heats the water. The next thing that happens is the steam that's generated from the burning of this wood is collected up in this dome behind this big brass wrapper. And there's an actual extension of the boiler that goes up in there, and it's way up in the air to, to make it dry, to get the steam we want as far away from the water as we can get it. So it's a, a drier steam, but it's not purely dry. Inside that dome is a valve. The engineer can open that valve, letting steam through a series of pipes that run inside the boiler, and then down in the front in a curve into this area, which is the steam chest and the piston. The steam chest has a valve in it that slides back and forth in concert with the piston through a mechanism back underneath the locomotive. And what it does is it allows steam to be admitted either on the front side or the back side of the piston at the right time to do the most work. Once the piston has used that steam, the valve has shut off the steam to the cylinder, the steam is exhausted out another pipe, and it blows up the stack, and that is the characteristic chuff that you hear, is the steam exhausting after having done work in a piston, on a piston, in a cylinder. We can see in a very simplified form uh, how a steam locomotive, notably this one, would work. So as we look at this, we have this area right here, and this is the, what we call the steam chest. That is this part right here. We have the piston and the cylinder. That is this part down here. We have the piston rod that comes through to this device, which is a, called a crosshead. It moves back and forth in a straight line and has a pivot to a long rod that goes to the driving wheel. That would be this rod here. This represents the driving wheel. As this wheel 
goes around and down the track, there is a second smaller little device here called an eccentric that rocks this arm back and forth and moves this valve to cover and uncover these ports that allow steam to go where they need to go when they need to go there. So, using this as an example. Right now, this is oriented the way this locomotive is currently oriented. This is our crank pin, like the pin on a crankshaft, but we call this a crank pin. It's not on the axis of the wheel, it's not on the axle, it's offset. And we can see here, this is the end of the axle, and this is the crank pin. As the piston is moving, it's going to pull on this rod and pull on this pin, and that pin is going to go around the center of the axle, and the wheel is going to roll forward. So as we go into motion, we, uh, we have opened the throttle. Steam is being admitted into the steam chest. This volume on the, in, up in this area is filled with steam. As it sits right now, the steam in the steam chest can run down this little passage right here and around through here and down and get on the back side of this piston and push it forwards. The steam that's on this side at this particular point in time is coming back out, it's done its work, it's exhausting, it's going up this passage and underneath the hollow valve and exhausts the atmosphere. Again, the chuff that goes with steam locomotives. As it moves forward, we can see that the piston moves. We can see that the valve moves. And the piston, if we look at it, is now tending to move to the back. The crank pin is on the bottom. The piston is moving back. The motion is through the piston rod, through the main rod, to the crank pin, turning the wheel this way. And we see the steam that's in this chest is now allowed to pass through this passage down into this cylinder section and push the piston back. As the piston moves back, the steam that's behind it, which was on the previous stroke, goes up this passage, underneath the valve, and exhausts to the atmosphere, making a chop. And so there are two power strokes for every time the wheel goes around one full revolution. One power stroke pushing the piston forward, one power stroke pushing the piston back. So we can watch this happen. The piston is moving back. It is now moving forward. Steam is being admitted. It goes forwards. Steam is being admitted on the front. It is pushing it backwards. And while all that's happening, the steam back here is um, pushing the piston forward and exhausting the steam out. And now the steam is being exhausted out. There's a lot going on in here. And this is a very simplified um, example of how this works. This in no way, shape, or form demonstrates the reversing because these two go both in, in both directions. This does not have a reversing gear. This locomotive has two of these. This is just one. So there's a lot of little intricacies going on um, throughout the locomotive as it operates. But as busy as it appears, it is remarkably simple and remarkably efficient given the level of technology 150 years ago.